Welcome to the Dominguez Rancho Dobie Museum. This is the story of a family that shaped the history of California. A story of first in California and the very recognizable names of Dominguez, Delamo, Carson, and Watson that are embedded in the landscape of Southern California. Juan Jose Dominguez of Spain arrived in San Diego to join the Portola Sierra Expedition to begin the colonization of Alta California for the Spanish crown. Although Juan Jose's rank in the army was that of an acting corporal, he was a hardy man who survived the many maladies that plagued the new settlers. After long years in the army and expeditions up and down California coast, Juan Jose Dominguez felt it was time to retire. In 1784, approval was given by Spain to Juan Jose, the first large land grant in California consisting of 75,000 acres known as Rancho San Pedro. The boundaries of the rancho would include all or part of Palos Verdes estates, Rolling Hills estates, San Pedro, Lomita, and the western side of Long Beach. Although now in possession of one of the largest land grants, Juan Jose Dominguez did little more than build a modest adobe and graze cattle on the land. In 1825, the grandnephew of Juan Jose, Manuel Dominguez, would encourage the family to move north to the Rancho Dominguez area by building their family home in 1826. Don Manuel would become a key figure in the history of California. He holds a unique place in history in that his family was able to hold on to the land given to them under Spanish rule. When Mexico won its independence from Spain and finally when Mexico ceded what we now call California to the United States, the family still held on to the land. Even today, the descendants of the Dominguez family own portions of their original rancho land. In 1826, Don Manuel Dominguez built a six-room adobe home and began using the vast expanse of land for cattle ranching. This was the first permanent adobe home to be built in California. A year later, Don Manuel would marry Maria Ingracia Cota and begin to raise a family of eight daughters and two sons. Maria Ingracia's father was a Mexican commissioner, and through him, Don Manuel was introduced into a life of government and civic positions. The court of flags show flags of Spain, Mexico, California Republic, and the American flag with 28 stars. These flags represent the governments that the rancho land was at one time under the control of. And they represent Manuel Dominguez's breadth of involvement in those governments. First, he inherited land that was deeded by Spain but had to petition the New Mexican government that the land belonged to him. Under Mexican rule, he served on the city council of the Pueblo de Los Angeles. He was elected as alcalde or mayor of Los Angeles and elected two more times. He served as judge. At one point, he was asked to serve as governor but declined. He would continue his civic responsibilities and voice of diplomacy as California passed from Mexican rule to becoming part of the United States. One of his duties was to serve as delegate to the first Constitutional Convention of California. He was one of only seven delegates from the Southern California region. Here, we can see his signature on the California Constitution of 1849. The heart of every home is the kitchen. The original floors of the kitchen were packed dirt. These floors were added later. The kitchen is a mixture of old world luxury combined with native tools incorporated into the daily task of preparing food. This corner cabinet was made in England with no nails, only wooden pegs, and it came from Boston around Cape Horn. The blue willow dinnerware is from England as well. By contrast, this grinding bowl is from a period where the Chumash Indians lived here. It was discovered by the gardeners and put to work. Many of the servants who worked in the kitchen were local Swanga Indians who did the cooking and served the meals. This large dough board was big enough for two servants to knead bread at the same time. This is an early type of food processor that dates before 1867. Food was put through with paddles and wheels were used to grind. The small grinder was used to grind spices. Water for the kitchen was carried or pumped into the kitchen. This outdoor kitchen is where the bread for the rancho was baked. These beehive shaped ovens were called hornos. Coals were lit, bread was placed into the ovens and the wooden doors put into place. The long wooden paddles were used to remove the hot bread. The dining room or the comedor was where Don Manuel Dominguez and his wife Maria Ingracia Cota would gather their children including six daughters for the family dinner. This corner cabinet holds Havland china and crystal from France. Legend has it the china was custom made with a gilded D in the design. 
The low cabinet in the middle was made from Italian oak, made in Germany. Don Manuel held office under Mexican and U.S. governments. The desk, including the writing set and other furniture, date back from Don Manuel's era. This glassware is a collection of bicentennial memorabilia. This is the outfit worn by soldados de cuera, or leather jacket soldiers of the Spanish military forces in Alta California. This would have been similar to what Juan Jose Dominguez wore during his time in the army. The map of Rancho San Pedro shows how the land would be divided between the remaining or surviving six Dominguez daughters. The Dominguez branding iron with the lemon yoke is the first registered cattle brand in the state of California. The Dominguez's also received the first U.S. land patent in California. This family parlor was used for reading, music, and sewing. The room is graced with ornate Baroque carved oak furniture. The white sewing machine dates from 1881. This Victor Horn gramophone is adorned with oak panels and oak horn. The oak and walnut spinning wheel is from when sheep and farming were added to the rancho at the suggestion of son-in-law George Carson after the drought of 1860. Maria de los Reyes, the youngest of Don Manuel's daughters, was also the wealthiest, due primarily to the production of oil found on her inherited land. This is the main salon or the living room of the Dominguez family. This portrait of Don Manuel receiving the patent of his land was painted by Solomon Nunez Carbajo in 1850. It is believed to be the first oil portrait painted in California. Carbajo became ill on the Fremont expedition, convalescent at the rancho, and painted the portrait as a bread and butter gift. A mahogany pianoforte piano provided delightful music many at night in the salon. It was donated by the Carson family. Adding to the family musical instruments is the cither. Here's Don Manuel's gold watch and chain. This paisley shawl is from England and 150 years old. Tea was served in this Limoges tea set from France. Don Manuel had eight daughters and two sons. Only six daughters outlived their mother and father, Ana Josefa, Guadalupe, Dolores, Maria Victoria, Susana, and Maria de los Reyes. Three of the daughters married men whose names are imprinted throughout the Southern California landscape. Dolores Simona married James Watson, Maria Victoria married George Carson, and Susana Delfina married Gregorio de Lamo. This is the bedroom of Don Manuel and his wife, Maria Ingracia Cota. All of their ten children were born here. This is the room where Don Manuel died in 1882. As there was no central heating, bed warmers were used before retiring for the night. The mahogany chest of drawers topped with marble was considered a sign of wealth. The basin and pitcher used to wash up at night are from a 150-year-old firm in England. One choice of Evie reading, Life of Christ, was published in 1878. Portrait of the Virgin Mary is from the 18th century Spanish colonial school of painting. As was typical of the time, there were no closets due to the fact that early taxes were collected if you had closets in the house, so an armoire was used for clothes. The white cotton nightgown is scented with the trim to the sleeves and bodice. This leather stagecoach trunk was used by Don Manuel on his many trips to Monterey for government business and doubled as a seat when riding the stagecoach. This room was originally a small parlor but was converted into a chapel for family worship. Hand-painted, a realistic depiction of the crucifixion was made in Mexico. Behind it is a memorial window installed in 1910. The altar is framed with two gilt metal candle holders. The altar itself holds a brass bookstand with a leather-bound Bible. A dramatic wood carving depicts Michael the Archangel. Two other hand-painted wood carvings are of the accession of Virgin Mary and the Madonna. 200 years old, this choir book is made of vellum with the square notes of the Gregorian chant. Head of St. John the Baptist is from the late 18th century Spanish school of painting. This room is the last of the original construction of the adobe. Susana Delfina was the fifth daughter of Don Manuel. In 1890, she married Gregorio de Lamo, who was the first general counsel from Los Angeles to Spain. The de Lamos were world travelers with extensive travel throughout the Orient. The exquisite chair and center table set are hand carved from rosewood. The rug is from China. These bronze Chinese temple dogs sit near the fireplace. Fireplaces were a new addition to the new rooms that were added onto the original adobe. A Queen Anne style desk is decorated with a Japanese landscape with rising sun. On top of the desk is a photograph of Carlos de Lamo, one of the two sons that de Lamos adopted. At either end of the room are portraits of Susana and Gregorio, painted by Jose Durdes Biada, Dolores Simona, Huera Americano, and James Watson in an arranged marriage. 
Don Manuel's desire was to have a lawyer in the family to provide legal representation for his land grant under the California Land Act of 1851. Dolores was so afraid of James when he arrived at the rancho that she hid under the bed. This is because of his gunslinging, deadly shot reputation. This honeymoon dress belonged to a member of the Watson family. A transfer decorated glazed wash basin and chamber pot sits on the marble topped washstand. A Louis XVI twofold floor screen provides privacy. This is a collection of German porcelain dolls. They were Dolores' gifts to her granddaughter Anita. The doll buggy dates from 1881. A Havilland Limoges tea set graces a Chippendale style table. Dolores' rosary and James' prayer book rest in a Rococo style kneeler or pray to. Dolores had a special collection of Madonna paintings. James died young, leaving Dolores with four sons. This is a special chair of Dolores. Here, she passed away doing her favorite pastime of lace work. Maria Victoria married George Carson in 1857. George worked and ran the rancher from this plantation desk. He became the right-hand man of Manuel Dominguez, supervising the transition from cattle ranching after the disastrous drought in 1860 to sheep. Later, he would move the rancho into more agricultural farming. The Edison home phonograph played records that were in the shape of cylinders. Music also came from this mahogany stained upright player piano. Victoria's opera glasses sit atop the piano. The Carsons were given 14 acres north of the rancho and built a home and barn there. This furniture is from that home. Since the electricity was new, the family would light up the old gas lamps and then turn on the electric lamps. In 1910, a remarkable event took place in the skies above the Rancho Dominguez. This would be the first international air meet in the United States. The air meet was a huge success with spectators visiting from around the world. Every year, the Dominguez Rancho Adobe Museum stages a reenactment of what has become known as the Battle of Dominguez Rancho or the Battle of a Woman's Gun. In 1846, soon after the outbreak of the war between Mexico and the United States, it was one of the many local skirmishes that took place not far from the adobe. For the Californios, the Spanish-speaking descendants of the original Spanish colonists, it was a very small victory over the superior American forces. However, Don Manuel Dominguez could see that the Americans would eventually prevail. He became a key principle and voice of reason between the Californios and the United States. Across from the adobe is Casa Claret at Dominguez. It was built with the Lamo family oil money. A seminary and retirement group home for Claritian fathers, the adobe, and 17 acres were given to the fathers in the 1920s. We hope that you enjoyed this tour of the Dominguez Rancho Adobe Museum and its unique place in the history of California.